Hey everybody, this is Vince Miller. Thank you so much for joining me. Now on this day in history, the events that unfold mark what believers call Good Friday. It's a day full of meaning prompting us to do things like reflect and remember and even rejoice. So as you skim through the timeline of events that I posted below, at least I'm hoping you will, you're going to recount all the trials and the tribulations that Jesus endured on this day. And one question that should emerge is, what makes this day so good? So to understand the answer, we've got to look beyond this day and all the visible events. For a moment, we've got to look past what people are doing to Jesus and see what Jesus is doing. We need to see past the horror inflicted upon him and see the hope that is initiated by him. And the easiest way to see this is to see the whole story because the events of this day are only a, a snippet, a tiny snippet of a larger and longer story told by God. And to understand the narrative, you merely need to listen to a few timeless statements that God has been communicating to us through scripture for generations. They illuminate his plan and reveal why this day is dubbed Good Friday. First, God reminds us in Romans 3.23 that it, this world and its people are perpetually broken and separated from him by our disobedience called sin. It states, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Second, we turn to Galatians 3, verse 13. It explains that because of our sins, we were cursed and we needed someone to save us. Therefore, God chose chose to save us himself, providing his son who rescued us from our sins. This text reads, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. Next, we turn to Colossians 2 verse 14. It explains that God planned to pay our sin debt for us. And the cross is where this debt was paid. The text reads, God, by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. And last is my favorite, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. It clarifies that the payment had to be made by someone sinless. Our sins were purchased and paid for with the currency of a sinless son who died at the hands of sinful men to save us. And this text reads, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now, these scriptures tell one cohesive story, a story of divine intervention and redemption. On this day, 2000 years ago, Jesus saved the world from sin. Despite the injustice he endured, sentenced, scourged, mocked, and crucified, Jesus was simultaneously executing a divine plan. He was redeeming us, lifting the curse by bearing our sins upon that cross. In this act, he paid the penalty and canceled our debt, purchasing our salvation with his righteousness. Now, those unwilling to see the divine story and accept their own sinfulness find this event perplexing and the brutality unjust. But for those of us who have acknowledged our disobedience and sin, we see the cross for what it is, good news. For us, this day is profound. It is the day when a sinless savior took upon himself the punishment we rightly deserve so that we might be righteous before God. And that is what makes it Good Friday. I love you guys. I pray this has blessed you. If it has, share it with someone else. And I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.